great i hope you all are as excited as i am let's maintain this for the entire session and i assure you all that we will be going home with a bunch of super exciting information and rewards so let us move on i want to tell you my lovely attendees that we at think loudly are on a mission to make sure that no individual stays apart from becoming an it enthusiast due to the absence of proper resources by absence of proper resources i mean basic general a uh, study material you know there are so many individuals who want to get into an it firm but they lack study material and they lack proper direction and that is why we organize these webinars so that we can reach out to as many students as we can right now so many students are there in their initial days they hesitate and they get nervous with the everyday growing technology because technology is something which is new every moment right if i tell you a glimpse of my way of things whenever i think that i have learned a new concept and i feel like i am going to be the next developer or the next data scientist i finally completed and worked hard on those complex concepts and you know ml algorithms and python codes i finally realize that okay there is something new right i find myself introduced with a new technology in the market which is frustrating but don't worry as now learning is made easy with think loudly study material and study programs and we'll be telling you more about them as we move let us know your response in the chat box please guys we would be very excited to know how much you are feeling about the session is it good going how is it how do you feel all right i want to confirm you guys with the comfort that we promise you will be going further with some really weightful content the moment you finish this webinar right and you'll be more confident than what you were before before starting the webinar i want to take some time now and thank all of you who have joined us today and we'll make sure that you will be taking some amazing prizes home today Stay tuned. Some prizes are waiting for you at the end of the session. If you are excited, drop your favorite emoji in the chat box. Fast. Which one is your favorite emoji? Let us know. Nice, Sam. Nice. Uh huh. Hey, Sakshi. Hey, hey, Sakshi. Uh, this is Naman. Uh. Mm -hmm. thank you sakshi for welcoming all our students i'm very happy to see so many emojis coming up i think phola is very happy she is dancing <laughs> yeah so uh, it's going well thank you sakshi for you know hosting us today uh, yeah so over to you uh, so i'm here with you so if you need anything i'll be here with you thank you naman thank you thanks a lot so can we move on to the next slide now right so everyone as you can see now we have today's agenda so at first we will be welcoming our guest who is here today and he'll be sharing his success story as part of think loudly how he got into think loudly how things got changed when he got here and what kind of courses he enrolled into you know and you people must be also in so many doubts like how things work and how do we do things so for that we have our special guest he'll be telling you he'll be clearing all your doubts second we will be giving you a quick introduction about think loudly itself now this section will be completely dedicated to our friends joining this webinar for the very first time all right i know many of you know how think loudly is and you already know naman but for those who don't know don't worry we have proper guidance and proper resources to help you out next moving forward we have an exciting webinar offer for you all and trust me you'll be very happy knowing it i'll be telling you more when it comes right not right now in the next section we will jump into the core part of this webinar which is why we all are here right we will learn how to get into it with zero experience obviously how can we forget that that's why we are here in this webinar now here is my favorite part of the webinar 
the next section is the most exciting as here you will be given a chance to enroll into a course worth four thousand dollars for zero cost you heard me right that's crazy but remember you have to be very attentive in the session and you must answer all the related questions also you keep dropping your favorite emojis in the chat box i know you might have some doubts and they'll be all cleared as we move on now comes the q and a part wherein we will be taking all your questions and doubts and queries and be answering all of them as you can see with this we'll bind it up and i hope we are good to go next slide please Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And Stephen has proved that. Stephen was once a student at Think Loudly, and now he's here sharing his journey with us. And I want you all to be doing the same in future. I want people from this batch sharing their journey after they finish their Think Loudly courses. That you know, once we were also listening into a webinar, we were also listening. to a, a guest and now i am here you know flexing and all that we want that from your side right also the reason why we do these uh, guest talks is because we want we thought there's no one better than someone who exactly at who was exactly at same position as you all are right now to answer all the doubts and the queries right so let us welcome him with the cheers in the chat box start dropping in your favorite emojis and write in your favorite emoji super fast over to you stephen and thank you for coming hi hi is everybody doing i hope everybody is good uh, my name is stephen obaro um i'm once a student like you guys and i'm always think going to be a student because i'm open to learn new skills and new technology like she been talking And I started um Team Cloudy for I don't have no IT background like um twenty 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 I started Team Cloudy with um Neman and Mukesh. So on um, my background, I started with fundamental, trying to get um a job because I don't have no background. But unfortunately, um God so kind, Mukesh was there for me. and team cloud they were there for me all the man guiding me and giving me the support i need and also in you knowing american market to get a job it job they need you to get like um experience background years working experience for like um 7 years or 6 years or those um working experience on the it field and me i'm coming like a person that don't have no background at all which i do not have no background of it or working experience of seven years but with the help of um god and mukesh they were guiding me giving me working experience apart from my class guiding me giving me working experience and also telling me what the demands of the clients need so i start with team cloud you know, learn the skills Then Azure Fundamental, Azure AZ One Hundred, and I took the exam and also version to fight. T Cloudy was with me too all through the post process, and especially Nem and Nem was working with me even before I got a job. So I got a job by the grace of God. This is my third job I've been in since twenty twenty. So my first job was uh, I have a background. Mukesh was still supporting me, and when I get a job, also I got another job. my hand the stash getting stronger because now my first job gave me the work experience and also the not that everything they're teaching you guys right here not that you guys don't know it you guys know it you guys are very brilliant because my own experience was that after i took took the class from team cloudy i don't have american working experience so mukesh and hi were studying about american market and so I can get the walking experience. Not that you guys don't know what is virtual machine. That's not the question they will ask you guys in the interview. They will they want to ask you guys based on your work experience, how you guys close tickets, how you guys approach tickets, how you guys approach your manager communication skills with clients, how you guys communicate and approach difficult tasks. Can they trust you guys with their application? Can they trust you guys with their data? 
Can you guys secure their data? All those experienced, how you guys do it? That's why ThinkCloud is with you guys. So those working experience, it's not just that I know the technology. You guys need to understand then these people want work experience too. So with Think Cloudy, they're going to show you guys working experience, technology wise, and give hold your hand. That's why I love them. And I still communicate with them to date, even though I, I'm, I'm, I'm working now. I still communicate with them to date because some things, like he said, technology is wide, new technology come out every day. You can never get enough of fundamental. I always go back to my fundamental and Think Cloudy are my fundamental. They are, who, they are the people that build my IT career. So you guys can never get enough of fundamental. Can you guys hear me? I don't know if you guys can hear me. Oh, yes, Stephen, we can, we can hear you. Yeah. So, uh, Stephen, I have a question for you. So would yeah. you mind to tell us that uh, how was your interview process and uh, which, which were the technologies you were focusing on uh, and how did you make it into the interview? Yeah, so uh, I was focusing on Azure uh, Fundamental, easy a better job of my of work that I like it with easy one on uh, nine hundred. So I focus on easy one hundred four, which is Azure Administrator. And so my interview process at first it was challenging, gonna lie, because I don't have no working experience, but I know the technology. That's the difference between me and those people that were working at that time. Tim Cloudy taught me the old skills of technology, but I don't have the working experience that time. So um, I start asking some questions about what am I lacking? What are my mistakes? Because I asked the interviewers, did I do right? Do you uh, have, how did I perform? Because definitely their skills ask me what I'll be doing. I would definitely, it was challenging because I don't have no working experience because when you have working experience, they expect you to be talking instead of me, the way I was saying, oh, I've been working on different virtual machine. That's not what I was supposed to say because I don't have no working experience at that time. So I was saying, oh, I work with virtual machine, VMWares. No, I was, I should have said, okay, I maintain and governor identities then they know you know what you're talking about. Then I work on Active Directory's application, client application, connect client application. It was challenging at first, but I study about the work experience that gave me the job. So my first job, even my first job, I don't even know how I got my job. Funny enough, it is Mukesh that I was talking to. Mukesh, you can ask him. Mukesh, I was talking to him because he was working close to me. Team Cloud will never, never lose you guys. I did several interviews. I don't know one has already given me given me offers. So on the process of doing interview, I was planning for the third interview um, that period of, th of that week. Mukesh came into my system on the team because me and Mukesh were talking. He was trying to set up some stuff for me. So he came into my system. He saw my email. He was the one that sent my email. He said, congratulations about I think one of this job you've been doing interview gave you offer. This is the email. So he clicked it. I clicked it. So I read the email. My first job was called uh, is HCL. So I last there for like two months. I was still, still not I'm still learning the experience. But trust me, your first job is the is the break is the door is the ice ice break. It's gonna break the door for you guys. It's gonna give you guys much opportunity because at that time you already know some work experience. You can beat your chest that yes, you have experience together with what Team Cloud teach you guys. And with those little experience or this little time you guys spend in the job, your first job, it might not last long, but that's not, that doesn't stop you. He, okay, in fact, he's helping you, it's building you. Because definitely every of my friends that have worked in this IT field, their first job is not their, it's not their, it's not the job that they do now. Your first job, you're supposed to learn with it. You learn with it and you're growing with your career. Definitely growth is, the, is important. So my first interview was challenging, but it definitely worth it. It's worth it. And it's paying enough now. So uh, Stephen, uh, the next question is that, what was your background? Were you in IT or were you from non-IT? And uh, wherever you were working earlier, was there anything you were do doing related to IT? Okay. Or, or you were completely- yeah, earlier on, I was I don't have no background on IT. It's my friend I saw. It's my close friend that I would go to church together. 
me back then I used to work with like um live driving Uber uh, so videographing just trying to get a living they don't have no stable no stable nine to five job that I can beat my chest that I must dedicate into this complaint every day at that time I was just struggling until I met a friend that is doing IT he's my church member I've been looking at him I thought he'd do something different one day something asked me which is Jeremy so one day I asked him Jeremy what's up what you do so he told me then he gave me Mukesh and um, I said name and number that's how I got into the IT field. I don't have no IT background before I got into the IT field. And it is definitely what it is. It's a life changer for me. It's really exposed me into different what to do business and industry required for IT person. You guys are very important people in this industry. So you guys should know that. So it means, Stephen, that even people who are working in non-IT can make it into IT because there are so many students who are... Most definitely. Yeah, who have joined Most us. Most definitely. If you... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Naman. No, it's yours. So most of the students, they always come to us and ask whether is it really possible that we can make into IT? And we always try to convince, but I think you are the real testimonial in front of us <laughs> today. I think this is the real time that they all are you know, listening to you. Uh, I don't have no IT background. You all, okay, some of you might have computer um, background. I don't have none. Okay, my my class, I wish Mukesh was here. But, but Mukesh will tell you my story because it was a struggle for me. I don't have no background of IT at all. So some some basic things that you guys might have been catching up. It was tough for me. Because I don't understand some basic things. Sometimes I, Mukesh was with me. Mukesh would tell me, this is how you do it. There's always a fundamental of everything. There's always a start point process. Before they build a house, they build foundation, right? So he said, you have to start with the foundation. So I was going back to the fundamental. Those questions I don't ask. And also, if your teacher spend like two hours for you, with you, you yourself, you have to spend four hours yourself. That's what makes it perfect for you. So you non-IT Bangla people here yeah, can have IT job. And there's many, as my colleague that I work with, that are coming from non-IT background that have job. I don't know where they took the class, but I'm telling you guys, non-IT background can definitely be an IT professional. You're in the you're in the lab. Tinker is the lab. You guys get cooked over there. And definitely, you will definitely have. I teach you, but the most things important that I will tell you guys when you guys do an interview, the thing that after you guys pass your uh, interview and all that, they want to ask you guys where have you guys been working before? Like they want to find out your working experience and all that. So I would advise you guys to say that you guys have been working with Team Cloud in and doing the role you guys are applying for. <laughs> And also, all of, if you guys have um, other complaint, um, I can talk to Jeremy. But Team Cloudy is the main part you guys will say you guys are working before. That's the working experience. That's all. They just want to see you guys have been doing this thing they are interviewing guys before. So that's all. So you guys are in a good answer. I promise you. This is my fundamental. This is where I got certified. This is the people that got me certified. So you guys are in a good answer. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Stephen. And Stephen, uh, one, maybe one last question, or let, we will see if we have more questions in the chat box. But, uh, but I would like to ask you that, what is your experience right now? So you have got the job already. So are you facing any difficulty on job? Or are you able to handle it out? Are you seeking out some help from your friends or from some people to complete your task? So what's your experience right now after getting the job into IT? I know that you must be very financially good, but here the question is more on technical, that uh, are you facing any technical challenges uh, while you work okay. through IT? Okay, at first, at first, um, yes, I was facing technical challenges because at first, that was my first job, I don't have no technical experience that deep. That's my first job. That's why I needed um, Mokesh. So Mukesh was with me 
after teaching me the normal team clouding class, now I'm in the real world now, right? So here you go. So I'm in the real world now. I don't have no working experience. Sometimes, okay, my first task, technically, I, didn't, I couldn't do it, but I know about load balance and all that. But I, in the real world, I remember you guys telling me that don't delete nothing without asking questions. I almost deleted a production virtual machine that was running. But thank God that Mukesh was there, so he told me not to delete it, and he walked me through. And based on those walking me through, apart from teaching me, he built my skills during the working experience too. So by, we, by till now, 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 I've graduated from being just an administrator. I'm being an architecture right now, offering solutions, ERP system, building ERP system for clients based on clients' requirements, offering solutions and pipeline. Yeah, I can say my skill sets and the skills of one thing. I can say I am like eight and I'm still growing. That's why I say there's room for growth every time. You can never get enough of fundamental because Microsoft always improve their services every time and had new futures new skills, new different futures. So you just need to be upgrading yourself in the market. That's all. Yes, I am skillful and I'm still building my skills. Yeah, Stephen, uh, one question we are seeing in the chat box right now that mm -hmm. do we need to focus only on Azure or can we focus on AWS or maybe on DevOps? So what do you think? Like, should okay. we focus only on Azure or do you think that even AWS has a very big market? Okay, for me, I'm an Azure guy. Definitely, what you learn in Azure, <coughs> what you learn in Azure, sorry, excuse me. What you learn in Azure is the same thing in um, AWS. It's just in the different names and the different formats. I think AWS is logical or Azure is logical. So I would advise you focus on Azure. Azure is, um, you're a Microsoft person. And Azure is, I think Azure is pretty much straightforward for, for people. And also, if you want to uh, expand your skills, be comfortable with one first before you try to expand your skills. Try and make sure that you know these particular skills first these, uh, of this technology before you start jumping into other technology. So you won't over crash your brain and over crash yourself. You understand? Take it easy. It's slow and steady process. If it's one topic, you understand the date. And also, Yes, you can also focus on AWS too. AWS is big in the market too, definitely. And it depends on your choice. My choice is um, think um, Azure, Microsoft. My uh, my friend, he loves AWS. He too is uh, certified from um, Think Cloudy. So everybody has their choice. I have um, I love um, AWS too. I happen to learn AWS too with um, then Mukesh too because it's helped helps me. You can definitely name both technology because definitely some interviewers want you to even be touched on uh, some job, want you to be touching some resources in um, AWS, not like doing deep things like implementing security policies with Microsoft Defender tools to um, AWS services. Some of your clients might be using AWS, some of your clients might be using Azure. So definitely it's what's blending both, but focus on one first. If you're doing Azure, do the Azure. If you're doing AWS, definitely go to AWS. Expand your knowledge. I would definitely advise that. Expand your knowledge. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Stephen, for answering all the mm -hmm. questions. You're absolutely right that both the clouds are similar and both the clouds have the very big market. One should can focus on one cloud very first and later you can you know, you can upskill yourself by building right. the cloud. That's totally, yeah. but you're, you're right, absolutely. Also, you can combine your skills with DevOps. So when you combine cloud and DevOps, that becomes a real market uh, for you. So thank you so much, Stephen, for coming today. I really appreciate, uh, you know, uh, your presence here. Um, it's from all the people who are here today. Uh, like I'm, I'm, well, I'm saying thank you to you. Uh, on behalf of everyone. So thank you so much. Come on, man. Come on, man. You're my teacher. <laughs> Always. You're still going to be my teacher. You know? <laughs> you're always still going to be my teacher. I can never get from, you know, fundamental, you know? So yeah. definitely. 
I'm really uh, happy to be here and talk to you guys. Definitely, um, I was like these two, some one of his students. I remember, is it um, Ima or something that was talking to us? That was the motivation too I needed. So definitely you guys in the right path and he's going to hold your hands till you guys certify and get job. And also if you guys are in the American, definitely you guys need to understand American market too, what American market means. That's all. So uh, taking the skills, think, think quality, you guys are in the right time. That's all I just have to say. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Stephen. Okay. So uh, over to you, Sakshi. Uh, we can take it forward from here on. Right. It was truly enlightening. Thank you so much, Stephen. I myself felt this was very useful and I'm sure our attendees would have felt the same way. So now as we have moved on, as you can see on the screen, it, it says who we are. So we at Think Loudly are constantly working towards our goal to change the living standards of people who are not from the industry, but are eager to learn. Think Loudly is a one-stop platform to serve all your needs to become an IT professional. With all the top courses, training sessions, live projects, you know, real-time interview preparation, profile marketing, and job support. Professionals at Think Loudly urge to seek quality in the tech industry with talented and credible individuals like you all in it. And that is why we prefer classes of five students maximum so that we can provide them the required attention and experts who are available for 24 seven to guide you, to support you, to answer all your questions and queries as per your needs. And this makes us different, you know, that is the question why, which everyone asks that there are so many ed tech platforms, right? If you open Google, you'll find so many ed tech platforms. They are offering similar things. They're offering courses, interview preparation, but how is that different from yours, right? So the, here is the difference. We are not having a class of like too many students. We only take the students, which we have the bandwidth of teaching. I need to introduce Naman guys. Come on. He's such an important personality here. So Naman is somebody who has some 10 years of experience in the industry as an IT expert. He was also indulged in the hiring processes during his work period. And now he's here to guide us with his own experiences on how to crack those nightmare giving job interviews and the processes. As cracking interviews is the actual difficulty and a lot of hard work. So let us welcome Mr. Naman. And I know most of you already know him. Over to you, Naman. Stage is all yours now. Thank you so much, Sakshi, for introducing me. So, guys, I think I, I uh, like many people know me very well. Okay. So, just let's start the session. Okay. So, guys, may I know that according to you, is it really easy to get a job in IT or is it difficult to get a job in IT? So what do you think guys? Is it really easy to get a job in IT or it's very difficult? What do you think everyone? Okay. Hamil, Hamil says it's difficult. Okay. It's a struggle. Emmanuel says it's struggle. Yes. Current market. It is tough. Very difficult. Okay. So some of you are saying it's very difficult. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So guys, I, can I, okay. Can I give you an answer which can really help you? Can I just give you an answer? So the, if I, if I tell you that if it is easy to get into it or not, then I tell you that if you plan, right. If you plan, then it's easy. If you do not plan and you just get into it and you try to, you know, get a job in IT, then it's going to be very difficult. Okay. So now this whole session, which we are having today is going to depend on this planning. Okay. Most of you, you know, we look our friends. Okay. Even, even myself, I look at my friend and see that that guy got the job in IT with AWS. So I should also start learning AWS. My, my another friend who got the job in Azure. So I should start learning Azure. 
or if my brother he got the job in project management so i should start learning project management and then we just start learning project management with no planning so can you guys tell me is it really good that we start learning it directly or should we plan and start learning it so what do you think guys everyone please participate and let's make this session very interactive okay so according to e manual we should plan okay dominic plan yes everyone is saying planning yes but now the question arrives that how can we really plan it you know how can we really plan it now i'm going to tell you there are five total steps okay to plan and i hope everyone is going to keep a pen and notepad ready so that we guys collect some good information here and tips and tricks here so that we can implement going forward okay so now we are going to have our five total steps which we are going to discuss here and we have to follow those steps sequentially okay so we have to follow these five steps sequentially guys remember this first of all the very first step which is very important is area of interest guys it's real real important that we understand that what is my area of interest whether i am a tech savvy okay whether i like technology a lot or whether i like to you know supervise work a lot so what do what do i like see if i talk about it right it is broadly divided into two parts technology and management you have to first choose that where am i going am i going into technology side or am i going into management side so may i know guys can you use the chat option again and can you guys tell me if you like technology or if you like management so guys can you tell me if you like technology or you like management what does excite you more management or technology okay some of you is saying technology some of you are saying management some of you are saying both management okay technology yes now guys you have to understand this very well your 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 interest okay your interest depends on two things one what's your passion okay and second what's your experience i know that many of you have uh, have answered my question that i like technology i like management ugo is saying management dominic is saying technology i i understand that that you guys have the interest in technology and management however your interest should be uh, you know should be dependent on two things one passion and another is experience if if you have an experience of 15 years and you have worked in management right it means you have the management experience probably you were not working in it you were working somewhere in the store managing the store or probably you were working in the in the warehouse and managing the warehouse so it means that your area of interest should be on or towards or should change based on your experience if you were dealing with some technology or if you you know if you were passionate about technologies that there is something in the market and you love to say it there's a artificial intelligence or there's a cloud that excites you that's your passion so your interest depends on two things your passion and your experience so always ask this question you know that whether i like to get into technology or whether i get, whether i like to get into a into a management stuff okay so this has to be you know chosen before you actually choose your it career path that whether you are going towards technology or supervision or management then in that case you can build your skills now it has multiple skills so one set of skills which it has is based on technology and another set of skills is actually based on management let's have a quick quiz okay so guys can you tell me that artificial intelligence is a management thing or is it a technology thing what do you think guys 
artificial intelligence is a technology thing or a management thing? What do you think? Okay. So artificial intelligence is more of a technology thing. You learn technology, you learn Python, you learn uh, data visualization, you learn data prediction. That's technology. Okay. Another question, guys. So cloud computing, like Amazon Web Services, AWS, DevOps, what is it? Is it a technology or a management? What do you think, guys? Again, it's a technology. Yes. Cloud computing is technology. AWS is technology. Okay. Azure is technology. DevOps is technology. You guys are absolutely right that it's actually technology. Okay. Now, let me ask you another question. Project management. What do you think? Is it a technology or is it a management course? What do you think, guys? It's management. Okay. It's management. Yes, it's management. You're right. So project management is, is the management course. Scrum master is again a management course. Okay. So now you have to understand because many of many of people, many of the people who come from non-IT background, they don't even know that what course belongs to technology, what course belongs to management. It's really important. So when we know this and we know our area of interest, that helps us to plan it properly. Okay. Now, I give you one more, one more scenario, everyone. And everyone, please, please participate. Okay. Like the way you are doing, guys. It's I really appreciate all of you. So, guys, there was a guy, you know, uh, there was a guy, Mr. John. Okay. So, Mr. John started learning AWS because John felt that the technology is the area of interest for him. Okay. So, for John, the technology area is tech. Oh, sorry, the area of interest is tech. And John starts learning AWS. But after two or three weeks, okay, after two or three weeks, he found he finds AWS to be difficult to follow because he, he was completely new to it and he really struggles with it. So what do you think? According to all of you guys, what do you think? Should he drop out from the course and should he join the project management? So what, what do you think, guys? What should he do? Should he continue with AWS course or should he go towards project management? What do you think, guys? Okay, we are getting mixed responses. Continue management course. Yes, what, what do you think, guys? So my opinion is, everyone, I'm, I'm getting a very mixed reviews, but I tell you that my, my own experience is that he should continue with the course because initially, initially it's not easy. You know, it's not easy to understand everything. Two and three weeks of time is a very short period of time to decide whether you will be able to do it or not. This is my own experience. You know, when I started learning driving, right? Initially, I, I struggled a lot. Okay, I struggled a lot for one week. And my father used to tell me that, no, you have to do it. You don't, don't worry. You will not hit the car anywhere. You have to do it. But after second week and after third week, I was improving day by day. So what happened? I started driving the car. And today, I have the license. So that's what you have to do with this. So it, it depends that it, it's okay if, if your area of interest is technology, but you need to keep a patience when you make a choice, you have to keep a patience and you have to do, you have to make sure that you don't, you know, take very quick decisions that after one or two weeks, you realize, no, I'm not getting it. And you are moving to project management. Please don't do it. Your time matters a lot. So it's very important. You focus on one thing. You can combine multiple skills if you have enough time. However, your focus has to be on one thing and then complete it and then decide whether you were able to complete it or not. There were students, they used to come to me and ask me, Naman, I am unable to continue the program. What should I do? So I always used to ask them to be patient. And I'm telling you one thing, they, they were patient and today they started their career already into IT. 
So don't get upset very soon if you are not seeing the results. I was talking to Lucretia a few days back. She's one of our students. And she felt, Naman, I'm not able to cope up because the course is running very fast and I'm a non-IT student. You know, what she did, she started taking it slow. She kept, kept patience and now she has started learning. I think Lucretia is, is with us and, and, and she is the real example that she has started learning. So everyone, if you are making a choice according to your area of interest, if you're choosing project management, continue with it. Initially, you will struggle, but at later point of time, you will find out that it's really helping you. Does it make sense, everyone? Are you guys getting my point? So what are you going to do? Will you drop and join the other course or will you continue with the same course and, and, and give it more time so that you understand more? What do you think, guys? Will you continue, everyone? So AWS and project management is just example. It depends on your area of interest, what you choose. If you're choosing cybersecurity or you are choosing Scrum Master or you are choosing anything, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I am telling you one thing that every IT field has the equal opportunities. It is who you are, who is going to break the opportunity and get into it. So just work hard. That's the only funda out here. So area of choosing area of interest is really helpful. That depends on yourself, whether you are a technology guy or a management guy. After that, second thing which we have to remember is job market research. Guys, it's really important. Many of you, again, I am telling you the same thing that if your friend has got the job in AWS, it doesn't mean that AWS is the right choice for you. If your friend has got the job in cybersecurity, it doesn't mean that cybersecurity is the right choice for you. Okay. The choice has to be made on your interest. That's one thing. And second, on the job market, research what you do. Okay. So guys, can you tell me that what is the best way of doing the job market research? According to you, which platform will you choose to do your market research? What do you think, guys? Do you have any, any platform to do market research? Indeed, Monster, LinkedIn, Google, yes, okay. These are the job portals, everyone. These are the job portals. There are a few other portals which are very important, okay, to, to perform your market research, okay? So LinkedIn and Indeed are job portals, okay? So job portals can be good, but there are some other portals which are very good. So one portal which I recommend to everyone is pay scale. Okay, so go to PayScale. It's a very good platform. And when you go over there, you can find out what's the average salary. How many opportunities are there? You can perform some, so there are some survey results which you can check. So PayScale is very good. You can do, you can check survey. You can check average salary. Okay, you can check some opportunities. So there are so many things which you can find on PayScale. This is a very good portal you can find. Second, when you are doing some research, Glassdoor can be one of the good platform where you can perform some analysis comparing some organizations. Okay. So Glassdoor can be your good platform to perform your, you know, analysis or, and, and third, you can certainly use Google. So when I say using Google, see, you have to understand that how many opportunities are expected in the year 2024. How many opportunities are expected in the year 2025? So if you see that there are, you know, 10 million job opportunities are going to be there for, uh, for cloud, okay, this should be the right choice for you. So performing right research is very important, okay? You can use these portals like Payscale, Glassdoor, and also Google. You can just simply Google it, okay? Also. Even on job portals, you can do some research, okay? Let's say if you want to see the current market. So if you, are, if you want to go and see like how many jobs are there for cloud engineers, you can just search 
cloud engineer jobs on LinkedIn and you can see how many number of opportunities are there for cloud engineer role. And, and then you can go for Indeed, you can go for Founded, Monster. So you can go to any job portal and try to find out that how many opportunities are there. When you perform your job market research, always remember everyone that it's very important that how wide is the market, okay? So if, if there is one market which is this much wide and if you have another market which is this much wide, your chances of getting the job in a bigger market is really high, okay? So make sure that when you are performing, uh, when you're performing your market research, because it's really important, then you are choosing a bigger market, okay? According to me, if you ask me that, which markets are really big, then I will recommend that you can choose AWS, you can choose DevOps, okay? You can choose cybersecurity. You can choose project management. Okay. And you can choose cloud security. According to me, these are the five, you know, five, uh, and we have like many more, uh, you know, markets for, to get a job, but these are the five very burning markets right now and very wide market. So if, if you are doing some research, perform your research on these five and compare it and then choose it. So this is really important. So guys, what are the two steps will you follow in your planning? Can you guys tell me what are the two steps will you follow? So first you will choose your area of interest and second, you will perform the market research. Am I right, everyone? Are you guys still with me? So what are you going to do when you are planning? What are you going to do? Everyone. So we will first choose the area of interest and then do the job market research. Got it, everyone? Can we proceed next? Exactly. Now, you have to always also remember that explore multiple domains. So when you do your market research, you need to you know explore multiple domains. When we say domains, it can be uh, project management, Scrum Master, what, which, whatever you want to do, uh, just explore multiple domains. Get expert review. See, it's very important. At Think Loudly, we have multiple experts. The students who are learning right now with us, they also know they are also with a lot of experts. And, they, and you can also come to me and I can also guide you. But it's very important that you get experts review. After that, you perform job market research and then you can finalize based on the compatibility. Let's say after market research, you found that, okay, I'm going with DevOps. Okay. Let's say that you finalize that job market for DevOps is very wide and I'm going to choose this. So make sure that you, you are choosing it, but you are making sure that it is compatible with you and you are finalizing it and you are going to stick with it for a long period of time. Okay. You don't, you don't come out of it just after your one or two weeks. That's going to be very waste of time, waste of money, waste of your efforts and waste of planning. So it's very important that you finalize, you stick with it for a long time and then see if it is really working or not. Okay. So this is it. Now, now third step, which you have to remember is the skill development. So guys, what do you think? According to you, what is skill development? According to you. Is it, is it learn, is it attending trainings? So do you think attending trainings is the skill development? Getting more knowledge. Yes, you're right. Say, yes, you're right. So attending training, you can get more knowledge. Practice, very good piece. Practice. What else? How can you develop your own skills, everyone? Labs, very good. What else? How can you develop your skills? Everyone, please participate. Abraham, uh, Amrut, everyone, please participate. Baljinder, Carol, Caroline. What do, you, what, what do you think you can do? Projects, yes, projects, you're right. Constant learning consistency is really important, guys. Yes, 
watching videos ugo you are right what else okay staying involved and informed yes you are right okay so i would say one of the other uh, way of developing skills is attending webinars going in in seminars webinars attending live sessions that's actually very good for you this is part of you know developing some skills okay uh listening to po podcast okay when you're driving your car i love when i whenever i go to walk i always love to you know listen to podcast uh, that gives me a lot of knowledge on new technology or whichever technology i'm learning so there are like a lot of podcast you can find on uh, on spotify you can go and listen to it when you are driving to work when you are in uh, you know uh, when you are transiting to your office or you are going to gym probably not on not in gym but yes if if you really are passionate about it and you really want to you know listen it then podcast is very good option you can keep it okay definitely it workshops yes you can attend it workshops yes so guys over here if i tell you that you know one thing which is not recommended for many of us who are coming from non it background is learning with videos this is what i don't i personally do not recommend and even my experts will not recommend to you that just by watching videos you can learn something because you're not the people who are coming from it to it you are coming from non it to it so you have to understand that your learning should be done with the help of live instructor if you have someone right with you you can ask hundreds thousands of questions and you get a clarity let's imagine john mr john goes to a session okay and uh, you know he's attending live session on zoom now he is getting hundreds of doubts on zoom he can unmute himself and he can ask hundreds of questions and get the clarity right there immediately and the, and the instructor who is teaching to this guy knows that he comes from a very different background so he has to explain and use the li real life examples in such a way so that john understands everything but the problem with pre recorded videos is that these pre recorded videos they don't understand the level of audience so that is why your if you if you really want to build your skills in it go with live instructor trainings that will really help you i'm not so i'm not saying that choose think cloudly only for your live trainings you can choose any platform in the world however choose live instructor led training that gives you the best results you have a flexibility of getting clarity of hundreds of doubts which you don't get with watching videos so it is highly recommended that you attend training while you are developing your skills you attend training which is with the live instructor okay after that you have to practice see it really matters whichever tool you learn in it whether it is aws whether it is a project for ms project for project managers jira for scrum master try to do the practice your own try to use that at least for you know 20 hours spend your 20 hours at least on that tool i'm very sure that in it there is no tool which cannot be learned within 20 hours so spend as much time as you can to practice that tool again and again again and again you should know every nut and bolt of that particular tool which you are learning it is all about learning tools so if it is devops you learn terraform jenkins different tools if it is aws aws has its own console okay if you if it is project management then you are learning ms project if you are learning scrum master then you have jira right if you are learning uh, let's say any other tool uh, like azure azure has its own portal so in it whether you choose management or you choose uh, you know you choose the technology based on your area of interest make sure you are good with these tools it's all about tools so if you are good with tools you will be able to 
achieve your goal so practice at least for 20 hours mark my word practice at least for 20 hours really helps after that there is something called as labs so practice is something that you are exploring that tool yourself like you're learning jira you're practicing yourself but performing labs and projects these are like two 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 same things that with the help of this tool you are solving some problem so you you can create your own problem or you can ask your instructor that hey give me one one problem i want to solve it with this tool so that comes under your project after that you go and attend webinars so as many webinars you want to attend go and attend webinars maybe it takes your 30 minutes of time or maybe it takes your 1 hour of time but it will give you some tips and tricks to land a job in it trust me podcast so while you are while, while you are listening to podcast that really helps and going in it workshops is also a good thing uh, you can see if, if in your city you have some physical it workshop set up go and attend that there will be so many experts will be coming up and will be sharing a lot of information with you that will really help you to upskill so the you need to ups, you need to develop your skill that's mandatory but you will follow that you will you you have to follow all these things trainings practice labs projects webinar podcast it workshop only then you will be able to develop your skills okay so everyone can you guys promise me that you guys are going to follow everything while you are developing your skills can everyone please promise me today that you guys are going to follow this everyone yes everyone so you will develop your skills and certainly a uh, think loudly team and all of us are with you we will try our best maybe we are busy sometimes but you can drop your queries and we can we will try our best to develop your skills one thing when you are developing your skill always remember everyone that make sure that you combine your skills like your multiple skills people are making mistake today they go and uh, try to develop only one skill let's say aws and they want to get a job but see market is very crowded right now everyone knows this that market is very crowded and to beat this crowded market there is only one thing you can do you can offer combination of skills to an organization and when you offer combination of skills to an organization you stand out of the crowd you, you you are no more in the crowd you are you are standing out of the crowd and that's when you are visible to organizations so just learning one skill i'm telling you certainly it may not help you have to combine it with multiple skills whichever your skills you want to combine it combine with multiple skills and then see the results trust me even when i was working for multiple like earlier i was working for organization it was it was so obvious that i had to combine multiple skills because when i'm moving into one project i'm dealing with aws when i'm moving in another project i was dealing with devops then i'm moving to, into another project i was dealing with azure then i found myself that oh i know so many skills today so people who are working in it you can also ask them they have multiple skills if you look at their resume you will find laundry list of so many skills because everyone in it love to combine skills so so just by one skill it may not be possible but by combining his skills that increases your chances 100 times okay so com combining his skills while you are developing your skill uh, skill is really important is that okay everyone everyone is that okay can we proceed further so do, do you really promise me that you are going to develop your skills everyone i think i didn't get the promise from everyone only few few of you have promised me everyone so combining a skills is the real uh, game behind getting a job okay okay so this was the third thing okay in getting it job from zero experience this was the third thing now fourth building portfolio uh, this is this is my favorite everyone you know we learn something but our our recruiter or maybe our interviewer they never get what we know it's really important that we expose what we know okay so you should know that if you are you know doing something you should build your portfolio okay building portfolio is very important building portfolio can be done in multiple ways you can basically have a very good linkedin profile 
ओके बट इन योर लिंक इन प्रोफाइल अंडर वर्क एक्सपीरियंस यू शुड टॉक अबाउट सम प्रोजेक्ट ओके दिस इज रियली इंपॉर्टेंट सो पीपल हु आर चूजिंग मैनेजमेंट make sure that your linkedin profile sounds really uh, good okay so under your linkedin profile your pro project should be mentioned properly and it should be very good second if you are coming from a technology background just like me like you are learning aws or probably you are learning dev devops or you are doing your full stack engineering which is like developing websites or applications right so the people who are in technology you guys need to have a github profile okay this is really important everyone see having github profile is very important because it's public and you can showcase to a lot of people so let me show you if i can just give me a moment i'm open, i'm going to open my github profile just just a moment everyone okay so let me know if you can see my screen so over here you can see uh, like i have this set of repositories here you can see that it, here i have created bunch of applications i have created jenkins job maybe chat application uploading image to s3 you know different because i am a technology guy and i love to do a lot of technology stuff so you are basically making this a uh, github profile because it's public and it may happen that interviewer visit your github profile as well so make sure that if you are practicing any code if you have a code to upload you are using github repositories okay to upload your code over here in future maybe not right now and you are using it to make sure that you have different uh, you know repositories available to showcase your code so that is that's how building portfolio is certainly important um having a good linkedin profile it's a good portfolio uh having a you know one second sorry yeah having a github profile that's really uh, really important for at least people who are getting into te technology okay and people who are getting into management please have a good manage uh, you know good linkedin profile so that you can uh, you know you can showcase your skills but over over there in your portfolio make sure the work experience you are mentioning is real good okay so that's important so building portfolio is very important we might can have some different session in future on building portfolio alone so that you guys know step to step by step that how can you build your profile okay okay now yeah so i mean last thing which is which is there which we should definitely do is the uh you know the networking this is the last step for everyone as i have always told the people who have attended our previous webinars i have always mentioned this that networking is certainly important so make sure everyone that you are connecting with right set of people okay and when i say set of people make sure that those people are recruiters okay it managers okay because these people are do lot of hirings so you are uh, you know you are actually getting in touch with people who hire you are getting in touch with good friends who are already in it okay so so make sure that you are doing the networking with right people see there are maybe 8 billion people in the world so you don't have to connect with all the 8 billion people uh, to do your networking please don't do that randomly sending the request will not help okay you have to make sure that when you are trying to connect with people you are trying to connect with right set of people so blindly do not send request on linkedin blindly do not make friends uh, you know just make sure that you are choosing right set of people to do your networking because i in my opinion one life is not enough to make 8 billion friends you cannot do that but yes you can have 500 right set of people that can actually help you to take you somewhere so make sure that networking is really powerful in case of 
IT people like as I as Jeremy uh, sorry as Stephen was here he mentioned his friend Jeremy right his church friend and even even I have very good friends even you guys would have a very good set of friends so make sure when you do networking if you are joining any community or maybe LinkedIn or maybe different portals make sure that having right set of people is very important you can reach out to them personally you can try to talk to them on messages if you have some friends like college friends you can talk to them university friends you can talk to them make sure that this is this is the most powerful way of getting into it okay so th this is really important does that make sense everyone so guys are you able to follow yes so so again, you have to promise me that you're going to target the right set of people. Okay. So make sure that's done. And personally, start sending out to people uh, your resume on messages, on your LinkedIn profile. Uh, you can post over there. You can have like a group of thousand people on LinkedIn. Okay. In your connection list. And you can post over there that I am looking for a job and they can help you. Okay. One last thing before I actually end my session here, guys which I want to clarify to all of you before we, before we actually move towards quiz. I, I know that a lot of, lot of people here are waiting for it. So the, did you hear this news that there are so many layoffs which are happening, you know, in Amazon, in Twitter, different organizations are doing layoffs. Have you guys heard this? Everyone. So is it scary? Is it scary, guys, that there are so many layoffs which are happening nowadays? Okay, so have you guys heard this news that Amazon has laid off a lot of people, right? Okay, so tell me one thing. Did you guys hear this news that Amazon has laid off cloud engineers? So have so okay, please. Uh, so you guys might have heard this news that Amazon has laid off, but I think you you might not have heard this that Amazon has laid off cloud engineers, right? Guys, this is a very big difference. Amazon is laying off a lot of people who are in HR roles, who are in finance roles, who are uh, working in warehouses because robots are taking places. But people are not getting laid off for cloud engineer role. Project managers are not getting laid off. People who are getting into DevOps role, they are not getting laid off. Please, there are 1 million people who are working in Amazon. Only 8,000 people are getting laid off. It's not scary at all. Trust me, it's not scary at all. It's not even their, uh, you know, their 8% or 8% of uh, work, workforce, which they are, you know, removing. So IT is not in danger. That's what I want to communicate over here because a lot of people, they hear this news out. In the organization, not only IT people are working. There are so many roles in one organization, HR, finance, uh, operations, uh, you know, call centers, uh, sales executives. So you cannot just blame IT for it. So that's why don't get afraid. Don't, don't be scared. Amazon is not laying off cloud engineers. Amazon is not laying off DevOps engineer. If you go and check their website, they're still hiring DevOps engineers. Okay. They're still hiring cloud engineers. They're still hiring project managers. They're still hiring security specialists. So don't be scared. Does that make sense, everyone? So are you scared now? Yes. So please don't be scared. Your position is right there. If you follow all the five steps, Okay, area of interest, uh, doing the job right, uh, job market research, third skill development, fourth building portfolio, and fifth is networking. So please don't be scared. IT is there for every one of us. Okay, and I'm very sure that you guys are going to become testimonials in the future for all of us. I'm very sure about it. Okay, moving on uh, with the next thing. Uh, Sakshi, over to you. I think we can start with the quiz now. So guys, did you enjoy the session, everyone?
Okay, so I think I think we can start uh, start the quiz, right, Sakshi? Yeah, yeah. All the best, everybody. All the best. May the right person wins. Tim is the real winner. So can you can you tell the name of the like the, the full name? Yeah, what is the full name? Tim, are you there? So Tim either. He must be here. He must be very excited to know, you know. Yeah, he, he must not be even able, able to speak. I'm here, Naman. <laughs> Hi Tim. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. I told you, remember yesterday I told you that you are, you are, whatever, will, I'll make sure I win it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We saw that in the email. Yes, congratulations, yeah. Tim. So everyone, let's congratulate Tim that he has won the, you know, course. Worth yes. yes. So congratulations, Tim. Thank you. That's Thank the you kind so. of confidence we need. Like he's saying, I already knew I would do that. Congratulations, Tim. Amazing work done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sure. Okay, everybody. So let us now move on to the last part of the session. Can we change the slide, please? Yeah. Now is the time when if you people have any queries, any doubts, everybody from the team is here. We'll be answering all your questions, all your doubts. This is the time, everyone. Doesn't matter you win or you lost. It doesn't matter at all. Like, life is on and we'll be having some new things in future for sure right now is the time when you ask your queries and your doubts with the experts these are the best people who can answer the questions so whatever you have just drop it down in the chat box and we'll be taking your responses for sure and and i really apologize everyone if uh, if in case we have missed any question you have dropped uh, in the chat window you can drop your queries again and we can take it right now so we have the we have the question from Rim here that uh, what about those without a degree and want to get a job into IT? Rim, this is a very important question uh, which many students always ask me that is it really possible to get a job without an IT degree, without a graduation in IT or maybe without a degree at all? So the answer is that yes, it is possible. These days, organizations are looking for certifications. That's really important to have because having degree or having education is no more important than earlier. So if you have a certificate from Amazon, if you have a certificate from CompTIA, if you have a certificate from different organizations or uh, authorities, you will, you will certainly be you know, included as part of their hiring drive. So you don't need a degree for it, uh, like mandatorily. If you have it, it's good. If you don't have it, that's totally okay. Um, moving to another question, Sakshi. Sakshi, we have another question here uh, from Dominic that I am taking AWS. What next course should I focus on after this? Okay, let me take this question again. Tom, Dominic, if you're taking the AWS right now, the next course should be DevOps, certainly, because it's a very high demand combination that you combine your AWS with DevOps. Also, you can combine with Scrum Master, uh, but I think the first choice should be DevOps. Emmanuel, can I get a job while still taking the classes? Absolutely, yes. Emmanuel, you won't believe there was one student, her name was Esther. She got the job three days after her classes. So we asked her that, how did you manage to get a job within three days of completing the program? So she told us that she started looking for a job while she was learning the course. So if you are ready, if you feel ready, and if you think that getting a job is not a problem for you, then you can go ahead and start up your applications right away. Uh, another question from Lucky, what course did Tim win the quiz for? Lucky, 
Tim can choose any course uh, worth $400, uh, whichever he wants to join. So we don't have, we, we are not giving him a choice. He can take a choice and he can let us know. Okay. Okay. Any more questions, guys? Anyone? So we'll be waiting for two more minutes for the questions and then we'll just wind up the session. So everybody, please ask whatever questions you have. You must be having a lot of doubts, right? On how to, you know, get into. Yeah. So who is going to help me with building resume? Ola, you can contact me or you can contact any one of your admin. They will help you to, uh, you know, move forward. Okay. So you can, you can contact any one of us and we will uh, help you to patch you with our resume team and that will be done for sure. How do you help with interviews? We, we help with interviews with the help of uh, mock interviews, preparation sessions, Isaac. If in case uh, you are having your interview within two or three days, you can uh, attend our interview preparation sessions. That actually helps you to uh, prepare and get ready to answer your questions to the interviewers and, and with a lot of tips and tricks. So you can also touch base with us if you need interview preparation sessions. We have the charges based on per interview round. You can uh, you can touch base with us so that we can help you prepare for it. And people who have signed up for the package, two interview preparation sessions are included for all of you. So if in case you want to attend interview preparation sessions, do let our admin or any one of us know. Okay, so next question is, are Linux, Jenkins, and Terraform enough to get a job? Rim, certainly, yes. If you have a good good knowledge on Linux, Jenkins, and Terraform, uh, it will really help you. If in case you can combine with more tools like Docker, Kubernetes, and Ansible, that will certainly help. So it's all about that, how much upskill your, you do on yourself with multiple tools and multiple skills. But yes, to answer your question, yes, even Linux, Jenkins, and Terraform are good enough. Okay, guys, do, uh, before you drop off, please let us know your feedback on this session so that we, 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 will, we will try to improvise and uh, let us know if it really went, went good so that our team feels motivated. But thank you for all your presence. Um, Namun, we have two more questions. You okay, can, sure. If you can answer them, last two questions, and then we'll just wind sure. up. Sure, sure. Any, any trainings on DevOps monitoring? Um, DevOps monitoring, we have tools on DevOps monitoring, uh, which comes under observability. Uh, you can touch base with us and we can guide you further on it. Uh, we have Grafana, we have uh, CloudWatch, then we have uh, you know Prometheus. So we have multiple tools with, with respect to observability. You, we can discuss about it. So we don't have dedicated training for it, but we can arrange if you need it. Yeah. Then we have AWS solution architect and data analysis, a good combination. Mm. Solution architect and data analysis. No, it's not a good option. Uh, you know, it's not a good combination uh, again. Uh, like it's two different things. So it's not a good op uh, combination. Uh, another question we have, I choose AWS code. Does it include the certification? It depends if you, uh, if you have chosen the package or if you have chosen only course. Uh, yeah. Admund is asking another question. Is Jenkins, Linux plus Terraform DevOps? Edmund, the answer is yes. However, DevOps is, has a bigger umbrella. It has multiple more tools. Jenkins, Linux, Terraform, Docker, Kubernetes, Ansible. So that is actually a group of tools. But yes, line, Jenkins, Linux, and Terraform also comes under de DevOps. Yeah. So I think we are good, Sakshi. Uh, okay, another question. How long will it take to get a solution architect job? It will take three months to three months to four months of time, if any, to get a job as solution architect. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming. Let us know your feedback in the chat window. Thank you, everyone. Yes. So as Gaurav has sent so many messages, you guys can watch this video on YouTube using the link. We have a proper channel and please let us know in the comment section how much, whatever you felt about the webinar. 
like somebody has just said it was a great webinar please drop it in the comment section and do like the video on youtube also it was really amazing to have you all in the session thanks a lot